See, I think uh, role of roles in any conflict in that yeah. one sense is essentially centered around the fact that uh, before any conflict begins, drones can be leveraged, deployed while being within your own borders to look at targets, assets, movement, motion, activity on the other side so that you can exactly identify, designate the targets that you believe are critical for you to look at whenever a conflict breaks up. During the conflict, uh, you need long-range vectors, you need vectors that can go and cause an end effect. For example, even in this con context, some drones were deployed to target specific uh, areas where terrorists were bold up, etc. So that's another vector where drones are deployed. And then of course, once you've done an end effect, drones are also required to make sure that you can do bad damage assessment. You can create two vectors, how precise the operations were, or create evidence around uh, what is really happening. See, I think uh, it's very important mm -hmm. to understand that uh, the need for conflict arises because an unfortunate incident happened and our citizens were targeted in a very barbaric way. Now, most of the, in these cases, there are armed terrorists, armed insurgents who are causing this loss of life. And if our critical and vulnerable locations are persistently patrolled using drones as a technology. I do believe that the attempts to something like this will either get caught much earlier or we act as a deterrence for people to attempt in these areas as well. And with the technology today, it is possible to run persistent operations which have multifold benefits, benefits of ensuring one, when our forces induct this technology, due to persistent operations, they become familiar with the technology. They become intimately capable of leveraging the technology effectively in such situations, as well as it prevents people from taking or it does not lend anybody the ability to give shape to their nefarious designs. So overall, uh, we believe very strongly at Idea Forge that yeah, persistent monitoring, ensuring that we create deterrents through observation and continuous observation, uh, we can prevent such incidents from potentially happening at Voyager. No, absolutely, I think uh, the problem is that uh, we don't know uh, when and how some of these things happen. The information arbitrage is very high and uh, the vulnerability of our citizens remains very high in certain areas where traditionally you do not expect people to behave right. in a certain way mm. or have not been traditional centers of uh, conflict. But uh, because they are not getting access in core areas that perhaps they want to impact, they may be trying all sorts of nefarious attacks. I think. Uh, as far as persistence is concerned, it is also coupled with the revisit time or the revisit of any area that we want to monitor to make sure that the gap between the first observation point and the second observation point is as small as possible to prevent any incursion in between. So from the standpoint of deploying the technology, I think once we start doing the math and we start sizing the right asset, the numbers are not outrageously large. Being able to do persistent monitoring is something that can be achieved with the technology that we have today and it is not going to be an extremely large number that is not affordable as required. Also are the operators available, we need have, we do have the volume of operators who can deploy the technology at scale.